Coming up on DTNS, Microsoft angers people on the edge, why Meta really delayed end-to-end -end encryption, and the unsung leader of autonomous cars wants to bring you pizza. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, December 1st, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm John Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And I'm Roger Chang. The show is pretty soon. There is a longer version of this show involving something about 90210. You can get that at Good Day Internet, <laughs> patreon.com slash DTNS. Speaking of patrons, we would like to thank some of our top patrons today. They include Mike McLaughlin, Missed Music Teacher, and James C. Smith. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Qualcomm announced its new flagship smartphone system on a chip, which we now know the new naming system will work. We will know how the new naming system will work. The new chip is officially called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and it's also Qualcomm's first ARM V9 based chip. Qualcomm claims 20% better performance and 30% more power efficiency for the CPU and 30% faster graphics with 25% more efficiency on the GPU compared to the Snapdragon 888. It also includes the new X65 5G modem with support for up to 10 gig gigabits per second speed. On the camera end, the ISP system supports up to 8K HDR video, offers an improved night mode, and includes a fourth ISP to power an always-on camera. The first devices with the system on a chip are expected before the end of the year. TikTok rolled out a Creator Next portal, which organizes all monetization opportunities for creators in a single place. With this, the platform now allows users in the US, UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain to receive tips and virtual gifts while not live streaming. TikTok also expanded its creator marketplace, letting any creator with at least 10,000 follows sign up to collaborate with brands. Adobe Analytics reports that Cyber Monday online shopping in the U.S. followed B Black Friday's trend, decreasing on the year for the first uh, for the first time, down 1.4 percent to 10.7 billion dollars. Still a lot of money, but still going down. Overall, U.S. spending since November 1st is up 11.9 percent on the year, with Adobe anticipating a record 207 billion dollars by the end of the year. While not releasing figures, Amazon also announced that it saw record-breaking sales between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. The latest V35 update from Meta's Quest headsets adds the ability to record a third-person view of yourself inside an app or game using an iPhone XS or newer iOS device. About a dozen games currently support the feature, including Super Hot VR, Pistol Whip, and Synth Riders. The update also adds support for voice calls in the Messenger app and begins the rollout of backing game saves up to the cloud. I love Super Hot. It's so fun. Is it good? Uh, so, yeah, oh, it's great. Uh, speaking of meta, Mark Zuckerberg has promised that his company will focus on building the metaverse. And it looks like it will be partly built on Amazon's AWS. Meta announced on Wednesday the AWS will be its long-term strategic cloud partner. This will include things good for AWS customers, like help running Meta's PyTorch framework more effectively. But Meta will also help uh, keep any future acquisitions that run on AWS on AWS rather than move them to Meta's own data centers doesn't name AWS as Meta's preferred cloud provider, leaving room for other cloud deals in the future. Could happen. Not to mention that Meta will continue to use its 18 data centers around the world that serve its 3 billion monthly active users. All right, let's talk about why people are angry at Microsoft today. On November 15th, Microsoft announced it would integrate the third-party Buy Now, Pay Later service called Zip into Edge. Uh, Zip lets users split any online purchase uh, anywhere between $35 and $1,000. So it has to be a certain amount. It has to be basically worth dividing into four and not crazy amounts of money. So $35 to $1,000, you can split into four installments to pay back over six weeks with no interest. Now, there's no interest, but there's a flat fee. It's a dollar per installment, no matter how much the installment is. So that's effectively 11% on the $35 level, but it's a very small rate if you're spending $1,000. And it gives people who don't have credit cards uh, an ability to pay something off. The Zip integration works at the browser level on Edge, kind of like a plug-in would, placing Zip as an option next to the credit card field at checkout on any website that it can detect a credit card field for. So Edge is doing what a plugin could do, except automatically, you don't get a choice. 
This initially came to the canary in dev builds of the browser with Microsoft starting to roll it out to all users with Edge 96. Users have to be in the United States and logged into a Microsoft account to use it. So there's a mitigation. If you don't want it to show up, log out of your Microsoft account, I guess. That may not be great for everybody. Microsoft said it, quote, does not collect a fee for connecting users to loan providers. So it doesn't seem like they're making revenue off of the transactions. In the past two weeks, a lot of people, though, have responded very negatively to this because this is, after all, the Internet. The criticisms include, this is browser bloat. This is a potential security risk because I don't get to uninstall this. Messing with the integrity of web pages by inserting something, uh, both a problem for users and website runners. And there are people who believe any installment plan like a BNPL is exploitative. Those are usually people with credit cards. Uh, especially embarrassing was Microsoft's automatic tagging system at the bottom of the official post uh, of this announcement. What that does is scans user comments to create tags based on upvoting of those comments. Uh, this morning when I was looking at the post, tags read bloat, BNPL, cash grab, dirty, edge, embarrassment, exploitative, garbage, greed, horrible, IE6 for some reason, uh, <laughs> making Nadella rich, payday loan, and it goes on in, in that vein for another 20 tags or so. Um, People, people upset. I, I have varying opinions about where I'm like, I don't know if that's legitimate to be upset about. And yes, I, I agree with that. What do you all think of this? What, you, the, let me ask you if this is a legitimate position that I'm about to take. Okay. Uh, people and their money, they don't like to be fiddled with. Uh, when money comes up, it's a big deal. In the past, if somebody said, hey, we made a cool plugin for browsers that mutes your tab. Uh, eventually browser makers went, you know what? That's cool. We should just integrate that. And they all do now. Everybody's got a mute tab option. Um, built right in. Nobody complained. No one has a problem with that. It's a made it for better life. Same thing when everybody adopted tabs and everything else. Spell checking in browsers. All these things. I remember them. This is different. This is whenever they tap into people's economics, people get mad no matter what. I would be mad if it were me to be mad. And I'm not that mad. But if I was mad, it would be this should be things that are on the website end of things in a healthy web ecosphere. And by that, I mean, if you're gonna accept Google Wallet or Apple Pay or this, these are things that websites should integrate or it's a plugin I choose to use, not one forced on me as, a, as sort of a built-in feature. I just think the minute they start tickling the money, people get enraged. And as long as they sort of keep it in the functionality place, then people are happy with new features to their browsers. Is that a decent position to live in, I guess? I don't know. That's how I feel. Yeah, I mean, I I totally agree with you. I think the the whole idea of uh, Microsoft integrating Zip into Edge, Microsoft is like, this is great. You don't have to use this. It's fine, right? We're trying to help folks who would use this service anyway. But you get anybody who's who's you know the browser wars are uh, they're uh, it's a big deal anyway, right? To, to choose the right browser is, you know, in many, many senses to choose the one where you feel like I'm not getting too much stuff pushed on me. Um, this is, you know, this is the right browser for me and it's, you know, privacy, privacy, security extensions, blah, blah, blah. But as soon as you start bundling in something, yeah, that's finance based. Well, I mean, I, I should have choices. I shouldn't, this shouldn't be my default option. Yeah, I think I think you're right about the the money kind of amplifying this, but it's also the fact that you can't turn it off, and and on by default, right? Those are two things that make people feel like they don't have control and they want to have control. Because you're absolutely right, Sarah. If they hadn't told anyone about this, most people probably wouldn't have noticed. Maybe a merchant would have brought it up or something. It's good that Microsoft was transparent and said they're doing it. I'm not saying they should have hit it, but it's because people said it that people are like, wait, I can't turn it off. Wait, it's there on by default. This should be an option. It it should just be a plugin. Uh, it's built on Chromium. It could just be a plugin. Microsoft's like, we're not making money off this. Well, you got to be doing it for a reason then. Like, why exactly. wouldn't you just yeah. leave it as a plug-in? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I get maybe, you know, a lot of the things about buy now, pay later being exploitative, I feel there's there's a legitimate worry of like, hey, yeah, about a third of people who use buy now, pay later fall behind on payments. But that's also because it's targeted at people who either don't have or don't want to use credit cards. So they are more likely to fall behind on payments because they're in the position where they need this. But it does a lot of good. 
So it's it's a privileged position to be able to condemn buy now, pay later altogether. If you got rid of it altogether, you're taking an option away from a lot of people from being able to buy things that maybe they should be able to buy, buy and wouldn't be able to buy otherwise. And I'm, a little, I, I'm a little distant from that one, but you're putting code in here that I don't want and could be a security risk because it increases the security risk platform. And most of all, I don't have control of. Yeah, I'm with all those criticisms. Yeah, it's unfortunate too because you know Edge has made some inroads in terms of market share and and trust, and people like it better than ever they ever liked IE. So it's kind of a bummer they have to deal with this. Speaking of bummers, not really. I'm not going to call this a bummer. Meta kind of did a thing that some people see as a bummer. They delayed its rollout of end-to-end -end encryption for Messenger and Instagram, and this isn't going to happen now until next year. Um, they posted an explanation from Global Head and Safety. Uh, Antigna, uh, I did it wrong anyway. Antigone Davis Wednesday explaining the delay. Meta is responding to concerns from child safety advocates who believe this would make it too hard to combat abuse. Meta says it will still implement end to end encryption, which would make it impossible to scan messages without one of the participants allowing for this, but it will also use the same algorithms to scan metadata, uh, you know, to look for unencrypted data for patterns indicative of possible abuse. So, User profiles, photos, how many messages being sent, and other non-messaging content is uh, is essentially what that that covers. Meta gave an example of a person setting up a new profile and immediately messaging a large number of strangers as something the system would probably flag. Uh, this is pretty much how it approaches child safety on WhatsApp, which, as many of you know, already has and has always supported end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, the Meta, uh, and Meta, rather, the company pointed out, uh, it already defaults provi profiles to private for those younger than 18 on Facebook and restricts adult Instagram users from even contacting teens that don't follow them. It also adds the ability to choose, quote, involves a child when reporting abuse on its platforms. Yeah, those are things it's been doing for, for a little while now. Um, this makes sense to me. Uh, the way I look at this is, Meta has decided they want to roll out end-to-end -end encryption on Instagram, direct messages, and Messenger. There are people who are very encouraging of that. There are people who are not. Some of the people who are not encouraging it are child safety advocates. And Meta is trying to say, look, we're committed to end-to-end -end encryption because we think it does more good than harm. But we will try to limit the harm it might do, do by putting in more other measures like we have on WhatsApp. And we'll to give you, you know, a bone, we will delay implementing until we have all of these new policies in place. That kind of makes sense to me. It does. It does and it doesn't. Uh, you know, it, <laughs> some, some, I don't know. It, it, it hasn't been that long. We all just started calling it Meta and I still just find it bizarre sometimes where I'm like, okay, we're calling the company Meta now. Um, but that's that's what it's called. It it This does sound like the company saying, listen, we're not trying to go against child safety advocates. You know, this is, we, we want to do everything right. At the same time, it's sort of like, mm, okay, well, end to end encryption already exists on um, platforms that Meta owns. So, you know, how, how long is it going to take? Well, I mean, I think the answer is until early next year. That's how long it's going to take. And yeah. if Meta did something wrong I mean, here, maybe. it was they should have committed to this from the beginning instead of trying to rush end-to-end -end encryption and say, yeah, we'll have it by the end of 2021. That that was where they messed up. They shouldn't have promised that without without these additional protections. So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna point a finger, it's that you were rushing it. You wanted the good press of end-to-end -end encryption, and then you got the bad press of child safety. So now you're doing what you should have done from the first place. But in the end, I think this is probably the right thing to do. It just took them long enough, right? Yeah. I mean, there's I almost no other option. I mean, there's no other option. Yeah, I made a comment yeah. earlier that uh, you know, is this like a movie premiere that gets pushed back and everybody gets sad and and to me, it didn't seem like it, but you made it the point that there are some people very interested in the overall yes. encryption and, and world. Encryption and encryption has, has a posse. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they they are pushing and pushing and pushing for it to come. And and even with this announcement, there were people complaining, like, you're just saying that you don't want to do end-to-end -end encryption because, you know, there's people on all sides of, of, of every issue. But but in the end, I, I do think that, that Meta is, you know, by hook or by crook, ending up in the place, like you said, Sarah, where they, they, they kind of, this was where they should have been the whole time. 
Hey, folks, if you want to join in the conversation, uh, we're talking about this and more in our Discord. You can join that by linking to a Patreon account. Get your Patreon account at patreon.com slash DTNS. One company is arguably the farthest along in autonomous vehicles, and it's not Tesla. No, no, it's not Waymo either. It's not, not even one of those trucking companies out there. It's Neuro. N-U-R-O. And longtime listeners to DTNS know we've been following Neuro for years. You've heard about them a couple of times just this year. Neuro has been operating autonomous grocery deliveries in parts of Houston and Arizona for several years. On April 12th of this year, it started delivering Domino's pizzas from one Domino's restaurant in Houston. And on June 15th, Neuro expanded its partnership with FedEx to use autonomous vehicles to do last mile deliveries for FedEx. Now, Neuro is offering delivery in Mountain View, California. From the 7-Eleven store at 1905 Latham Street there, uh, if you're close enough to that store, you can use 7-Eleven's 7 Now app between 8 and 9 a.m. to order a bag of chips or a pizza or The things you would want at 8 a.m. Yeah, well, or 8 a.m. and 9 p.m., <laughs> I think it should say, right? Or is it 8 a.m. to 9 a.m.? Could you double check that uh, in the story uh, to make sure? Anyway, I yes. Will. Yeah. Uh, pizza for breakfast, folks, from 7-Eleven. An autonomous Prius with a safety driver will make the delivery, though you'll have to come out and get the item from the car, even though there's a, a safety driver in there, because this is testing what will be eventually a driverless system. Neuro hopes to switch soon from Priuses to its fully autonomous R2 cars that are built for delivery. Neuro's R2 autonomous car is the only vehicle allowed by the U.S. Department of Transportation to operate with no human controls. Now, there are various regional approvals they need to get, but the U.S. Department of Transportation has signed off. You can use these cars, these vehicles. They don't really have a space for a human without humans. Uh, they have a dedicated delivery compartment. You go out and you enter a PIN uh, to get your delivery from those. Uh, that's how it works with Domino's deliveries in Houston. Granted, these are all limited pilot tests at this point, but there are multiples of them, multiple regions, and they're all commercial. These are not just R&D things. These are the first steps toward a wider commercial service. Now, why don't we hear more about Neuro? Did you find out? Is it between 8 and 9 a.m.? I'm still looking. All right. I'm still looking. I'll take a look, too, because, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, I, uh, I, I, I think it's 9 p.m. That it might. It sense. must be, right? <laughs> it's just only got an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Hot off the it presses. It has to be. It's got to be at least 12 hours, if not 24. I mean, I assume 12, but. Yeah, that one hour, that's, that's weird. <laughs> that would be really odd. Although, anyway, you know, we were testing. I don't want to, you know, assume anything. They're testing. I will get this right. Uh, but my question is, why aren't we hearing more about Duro? Uh, it's, hmm. Is it because it's not as sexy to talk about? delivering pizzas as it is delivering humans? Or is it because Neuro's founders are former Google engineers, Jajun Zhu and Dave Ferguson, and they don't tweet very much about Bitcoin and pot and <laughs> stuff? Like, I don't know. What is it? Yeah. Oh, I well, I, I think I think, yeah, there <laughs> there are a lot of ifs um, in your question, Tom. And I think I, I, a lot of this has to do with, yeah, who is uh, the loudest as far as autonomous vehicles are concerned? A lot of companies are working on this a lot. Uh, several companies will be come victorious uh, and maybe and maybe there there will be sort of like, I don't know. I mean, the Uber, I guess, of of autonomous vehicles, uh, eventually, where it becomes a household name, and 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 the other companies cease to exist. But we're in such early days of this that uh, neuro, yeah. I mean, it's it's important to to kind of remember, especially because people are trying to figure out. Uh, um, people are trying to figure out. Okay, well, what does this what does this mean? You know, does you know, do cars just drive themselves? Do I sit in the back of a car? How do we get my stuff? Um, all of this is happening, but Neuro is farther along and yet has 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 flown relatively under the radar. Yeah, the way the way I look at it is, this I is said this nine before. p.m. By the way, thank you, Roger. It is nine p.m. Okay, it's nine Woo. p.m. Okay, go ahead. All right, good. Nice, nice big range to get your your chip fix or whatever you're doing. Um, Pizza. I, I, uh, the way I see this, I said it in prep, I'll say it again. I think this is like the quiet kid in your college class who no one ever hears from on all the loud people talking about how awesome they're going to be one day. And this guy just quietly in the back scribbling out what he's going to do. And then he goes on to be the most successful 
I always like situations like that. So, so maybe I'm, you know, I got a little fantasy in my head about one day we'll only be talking about neuro and these other, you know, Teslas and Waymos of the world will all fly by, fall by the wayside. But eh, there's something kind of fun about that. And I kind of hope I'm right. Um, I like the idea that they're just dutifully getting a thing done and working on it. And they've got test data and they got more coming and, and, you know, ultimately, won't that be the backbone of all of this anyway, is that we've done the work? So Well, and I know that the test, the test is really small. Mountain View, California, it's, it's uh, you know, if you live in Silicon Valley or you know the area, it's obviously a hotbed for, for technology. But small test. Who is using this? Please. If you are, let us know. I would love to, I would love to know uh, what yeah. you ordered from 7-Eleven and, you know, it, did it work? Because there's <laughs> small tests, well? but there's multiples of them now. And, yeah, I don't think Waymo is going to fall by the wayside. Certainly not Tesla is not going to fall by the wayside. But I wouldn't be surprised if Neuro just pops up one day as like, hey, this is the company that's leading the way. And you DTNS listeners will be able to be like, oh, yeah, no, I've known about Neuro for years. That, thank you. Because they, they really are... I, I'm not saying they're the only one ad, advancing into multiple markets, but but the, to me, they they seem to be a little bit ahead of the game because they're trying to deliver things, not people. And that's just mm. a whole lot easier. To yeah. do. Well, uh, if you're not a Spotify user, you may have missed the big news today. That was when Spotify released its annual Wrapped feature. If you're a Spotify user, you're like, oh, everybody knows about Wrapped. Well, I am not. And so I heard of it exactly today. <laughs> this is where users see the most listened to songs of the last year. Artists, genres of the year. Podcasts were also included um, in, in, the, in the Wrapped uh, stats for the first time. And the fun of it is kind of admitting that you listened to something that you didn't realize you listened to 37 times in March. Perhaps more than you care to admit. But this year, Spotify also added a few extra features. There's a customized video, which for the first time can be shared directly to TikTok. Hmm. There's also a visualization called an aura based on your two, uh, your top two music moods. So I don't know if you were feeling particularly spicy, maybe it would look red kind of thing. There's a card game based on two truths and a lie that you can share for people to guess things about your Spotify habits. And for non-Spotify users, you may have been blissfully unaware of this momentous day, but uh, congratulations, you are now in the mix. It is Raps Day. Yeah, I went. Uh, uh, my my wife's a big uh, Spotify user, so I, I went. I asked her, I was like, "Are you excited for Rap Day?" She's like, "I mean, I did it. I did my rap. I do it every year." Um, you know, I wasn't particularly like excited or not excited. She's like, "It's kind of fun," but she, you know, she wasn't over the moon about it. Then my sister in law uh, messaged us, not even knowing that we were we were talking about this, uh, uh, pointing out that uh, <laughs> her. <laughs> Her uh, Spotify, uh, uh, what is it called? Wrapped, uh, Wrapped. is the, mm -hmm. the Wiggles, Blackpink, Rosie, BTS, and Lisa. Uh, <laughs> all the songs that her five-year-old and two-year-old or one-year-old daughter uh, listen to. So, you know, it may or may not reflect your own uh, taste, depending on whether you've set up profiles for everyone in your family. Uh, yeah, friend my... of... oh, go ahead, Scott. Uh, I was just going to throw out the quick, very quick uh, graphic design perspective. I, I think this is great. I uh, got everybody chattering. They've done it for years. I like hearing about where our podcasts are ranking. All this stuff is good. But it all looks like a GeoCity site from 1988, and I think they need to knock it off. It looks so ugly. It's so ugly. Shots fired. But You know, you know how bad that is? There wasn't even – GeoCities didn't even exist in 1988, and that's how bad that looks. So just fix that. You're doing good otherwise. Uh, before, so I, I heard about uh, Spotify wrapped this morning from a friend of mine who uses Spotify, and he was like, Sarah, it's, this is a huge deal. Like, how is your Twitter timeline not just talking about Spotify wrapped? And I'm like, maybe I don't have any Spotify friends. Because like, everyone has a different Twitter timeline friend of Sarah. Come on. We all don't do well, the yeah, same thing. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have enough mutual friends that, you know, it, uh, he, he, his point was taken, but uh, some of you, the DTNS crew helped me find, cause I'm an Apple music person, helped me find sort of the equivalent of wrapped on Apple music called replay. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not as kind of fun. It just is showing in a, it's order just a playlist of what your I've, top what track. I've listened yeah. to over the last year. There's no but card there game. <laughs> no card game. Uh, no, but, uh, but it, it was, uh, relevatory in certain senses where I'm like, I really listen to 
butter a lot this year. <laughs> I didn't even remember <laughs> doing that. Uh, good song. But, uh, but yeah, it's fun. I, I sort of liken this to Instagram's top nine. You know, you, you participate if you want to. You don't have to. It doesn't change your subscription anyway. But it's like a fun thing that I just never heard about. So yeah. Spotify folks. Good, fun stuff. I think Spotify is leading the way on making it fun to share your top tracks with other people and play little games and stuff. Uh, just so you know, Butter was number three on my list too, Sarah. So yeah. Oh, don't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. It's all mumble rap on mine because my son's mumble rap habit has bled, bled into the family plan and there's nothing I can do. Oh, because you, yeah, the same thing. You, you've got it set up well, on your, your echo, right? Yep. So, yeah. Yep. I yep. just would, I would love to see, I would love to see that top 10. <laughs> all right. <laughs> let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. So Lee wrote in and said, I remember Second Life and the land boom. This is in reference to our show yesterday. Very well, Lee says. And I recall Second Life being um, had become much larger in square kilometers than our real Earth, with land infinitely expanding. It's not like buying land in New York or Hong Kong where there's real physical barriers driving up prices. So 99% of the land in the virtual worlds is worthless. For me, I see meta land more like a hosting solution, like AWS or Azure. And then big developers like Blizzard or Epic building compelling experiences that people will want to enjoy. Just like games, though, there will be sequels and original versions of this these experiences dropped eventually. So the land itself is nothing more than hosted space to put your content Eventually, the land will be deleted and it's not needed anymore. To go a bit further, Lee says, I see somebody eventually building a browser to navigate these different experiences or a plug-in to existing browsers. So if I'm playing around in a virtual casino in one experience, I'm not then going to walk over to another experience when I'm done. Rather, I'm just going to teleport to my other bookmarked experience that I want to go to next, like web surfing. The concept of teleporting makes the whole land sale and subdivision kind of silly since it's not about location, location, location anymore. It's just about your experience that you have, and that's it. The only part where my co-location may help is discovery of your experience, but I don't know if it's worth a million-dollar price tag. Happy to be wrong on this, though. That's super interesting email. I have so many thoughts on this, and I'm going to try to keep this short uh, and, and sort of cogent about a couple of aspects of it. Um, having been around this for a very long time and spent a lot of time in a lot of virtual worlds over the years, one of the things I think we get caught up on, on is that the metaverse will connect them all together. And I'm not saying it won't. That's kind of the idea is everybody will sort of, you know, be together. That implies a standardized interface of some sort. And the way I see this stuff happening, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if that's going to work because at the end of the day, if you want to present your experience in your virtual landscape inside of this quote unquote metaverse, yours might be a third person behind the back sort of camera, control it on a browser, no headset required kind of experience. And the one right next to you in its in virtual space is something completely different that needs AR to function properly or whatever. And there's there's nothing wrong with each of these experiences wanting to have their own emphasis of either access or control. But that kind of goes against this idea that we're going to be unified across everything. And, you know, in some ways, we already live in a metaverse. I have Tom in a little private text message right here. I have somebody else in a Discord conversation. We have this happening on Skype right now. And I'm live streaming at the same time. There's these different ways to plug in to that connected group. And, and, in, and in many ways, a lot of it is happening at the same time. But the way this stuff is being described, the way Facebook slash Meta talks about it and others have me thinking they have not thought at all about how you're going to handle the issue of I want to enter this one this way. I want to control this one this way. And I want to experience this one this whole other third way. And if can all of those things coexist? Maybe. I just think there's a lot of philosophical discussion that has to happen before we're settled on anything. Um, but he's right well, about the he's right about the landscape like the. The, the idea of like, you know, this is virtual space. We're not limited by, uh, you know, seashores. We're not limited by mountains. We're not limited by other structures or, or just l the limit of land itself. It's just potentially infinite. That's really intriguing because then you'd never have to stop. You just go and go and go. And that means archive stays and new stuff comes in and you never really have to delete anything because the land's 
the land is virtual and it just goes on forever. I, I want to talk about this more on Good Day Internet because uh, there's so there's so many avenues to explore, like the limitless promise of the metaverse itself. Uh, but but the one thing I will add, I I think uh, what we're what we the the best analog might be the the web. You can access the web through the browser. Yep. You can also access it through an app. You can also access it through Discord. You can also access it. You know, there's lots of ways to get to the web. I think the metaverse probably will be like that. I'll say it again. Meta has pulled a great trick in make, making people think about them when they think about the metaverse, when they have virtually done almost nothing to develop the metaverse, and lots of other companies have. Uh, you know, we talked about those yesterday on the show. But in the end, I, I think Lee brings up good good questions here. And it's going to be a situation where just like in wow scott uh i i think there are there are controls on how you get around right you can't yeah. just teleport everywhere some places you have to run some places you have to fly some places mm -hmm. you can teleport if those controls are in the platform that will make proximity important it kind of depends on how you move around in the metaverse how you're allowed to move around in it. yeah and if those different again those different walled areas within the metaverse want you to come in a different way interface in a different way i mean there's so many there's so many questions about it and i love it i love that everyone's talking about it. it's gonna be the most fun discussion topic for years to try to figure it out but i just think we we're just tickling the outside we don't know we don't know yet <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, Lee, for uh, tickling our brains uh, here. If you, email, if, you yeah. if you have any feedback, uh, do send it our way. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on stuff that we talk about on the show, stuff we might talk about on a future episode of DTNS. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com is where to send that email. We would also like to extend a special thanks to Matt3. Matt3 is one of our top lifetime supporters for DTNS, and we want to thank you, Matt3, for all your years of support. Yeah, forget those other one and two versions. Matt three. That Matt was, three, place to be. Yeah. Uh, Scott Johnson also want to want to want to thank you. We we could start calling you Scott three if you'd like. Sure. Uh, but uh, but uh, <laughs> regardless, uh, where can folks keep up with the rest of your work? Well, they can find everything I do over at frogpants.com right now. And I just want to mention um, on the store I created a four set of uh, Christmas cards this year. Uh, all hand drawn, all created that way. Very nicely printed and done with Frog Pants Greetings logo on the back and everything. Uh, with envelopes also included. And if you're thinking, I've got a handful of people I want to send some cool cards to. And they'll be unique and never be seen again until next year, maybe. I don't know who knows if they're popular enough. Um, now might be the time to make sure to get those because the mail service, you know, it's a little iffy these days. And uh, not exactly reliable. So if you were going to grab those, now would be the time. Frogpants.com slash store. And for everything else I got going on, just hang around Frogpants, frogpants.com, or on Twitter, find me at Scott Johnson. Good Four stuff. people on my mailing list are going to get them because I bought them already. Yeah, it was nice of you. Oh, Thank Tom. You. I know, he's, he's so nice. Uh, he's just, you know, one up in me every day. Uh, we are live on this show Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. That's 21.30 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we will be back doing it all together tomorrow. Justin Barbiani. Back to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>